<laughs> We've decided we're going down there to meet with the governor. We're going to do the surveillance treatment, the boom of Miami, all the northerners moving down to Florida and that. As long and as it's I'm Miami, just, I'm we're staying at the Yeah, we're staying at the Caroline Miami Wellness Resort. Can you see me <laughs> at a wellness resort? How is the level of wellness of Governor DeSantis this morning? He, there's no meter that can measure He's it. He's the winner of this entire election because of the margin that he really won. It's nearly 20 points. He carried Miami-Dade. This is a county that is really a Democratic stronghold. So it was very obvious that he right. had a very good night. The chance were two more years. He's supposed to have four. His constituents want him to run for president. Right. And already there's a duel between him and the former what president. What is the action of the governor to separate himself from the former president? I mean, he already did. So he... Four years ago, the former president really helped elevate him, right, and helped in his reelection bid. But over the past two years, you kind of saw a little bit more of this feud, and that started to simmer, and now it almost seems like it's blowing up. The former president called him Ron de Sanctimonious the other day in the Wall Street Journal Does report. Does he ignore it? The, he's been ignoring it. Yeah, he's just he's just owning this moment in a more statesman-like, <clears throat> and he's really offering Republicans uh, a lot of Maybe policies the former president would also offer, but in a more statesman way. Look at how he handled the hurricane recently. And that's what he's been, that's what really he's been doing. Which really raises a question. Why did Ron DeSantis overwhelm while the rest of the Republicans really underperformed if you take a look at expectations versus performance? It's a good question. I think in Florida, this has to do with one big issue, which was the pandemic. And he was really steadfast about keeping businesses open, schools open, and that resonated. Also the fact that he has just become a rock star for the Republican Party. So he's not, and Floridians know that. He's just not for Florida. He's been out campaigning, trying to help from other Republicans. So is it a candidate issue? Is it the quality of candidate issue that John's been talking about it, or is it just that they have to really attack certain policies and not go for as much the other rhetoric? I think it's, I think it's mixed. One one, he's, he's a known candidate that people like in Florida, and it's policies that Republicans in Florida like, and even moderates, because we see him winning some of these moderates' votes. But also, he's not a Republican the way you have the Michigan candidate that pres the former president, uh, Donald Trump, uh, was really backing. This is not on the fringes so much, where then you have the Democrats able to, to win those races, like Governor Whitmer. And let's sit on the races a little bit longer. There's four states, Wisconsin, Nevada, Georgia. We're thinking of Arizona as well. Arizona has a Democratic incumbent. That's Mark Kelly. Walk us through what's on the line here still at this time of the morning on the Senate race. So those are the four key Senates. The one that we should point to as well is Georgia. Likely that is going to be a runoff, so put that to December. Arizona and Nevada, we have to wait for these votes to come in. A lot of mail-in ballots, and this could take a lot of time. Wisconsin is leaning at the moment to Johnson to be Republican. Republican. So what you really want to focus on this right. morning, because if you have Georgia being in December, this morning it's all going right. to come down to Arizona and Nevada. One thing I've, I, I have this in my mind from maybe Pew Research in that the world shifts 2045. It seems like we're getting there quicker than 2024, 2045. No, I don't the, know the where I'm going to be in 2045. The, neither do I. Thank you. The, the <laughs> demographics. <laughs> but Embry, the, the, the demographics are shifting, and to me, it's all happening faster than I expected. I'm you feel that? I'm interested to see the demographics because one uh, Wall Street analysis sent me what he thought was, which is more Gen Z voters had come out for the Democrats yes. more than even millennials. And what does that say about the candidates you need to put up for 2024? In your case, Tom, 2045. Is Gen Z younger than millennials? Yes, first Gen Z, also a first Gen Z lawmaker elected okay. in this uh, race. He'll be going to Congress. You know what the Republicans would say that in 2045 they'll be paying taxes and they might have changed their mind. <laughs> now, that's just something that they might say. You know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? No one wants to go there anyway, do they? Thank you. When we go down to see. <laughs>